Hi everybody, Steven Adam with Aerospace Innovations and today we're going to talk about the fuel vapor testing that we had been performing. Um, some of the teaser videos we put out, uh, we were at an actual oven. It was a powder coater that does all of our powder coating. The problem is, is we just couldn't control that environment enough to get good solid results. Um, we did get some of the teaser videos out of there, but we brought it into an environment where we could control a little better. So we heated fuel with a crock pot and now we can actually do the testing and get the fuel to the temperatures that we needed more consistently. So to explain exactly what it is we are testing against, what we're looking at is A, the relationship between 100 low lead and automotive fuels as far as when that fuel will vaporize and start to cause bubbling. Uh, but also we wanted to look at exactly how safe 100 low lead is or is not. So one thing with uh, the TSI in particular, but frankly a lot of um, Rotax equipped low wing aircraft, is a lot of people will say, well, I'll just run 100 low lead fuel so that I don't have to deal with fuel vaporization problems. There's some truth to that, uh, but not, that's, there, there's more to that picture. First of all, if you're going to be cli uh, climbing to altitudes where you're in the teens, you know, 15,000 feet or beyond really, you're actually not safe from 100 low lead fuel vaporization. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, what we've been able to prove today is that at 17,000, 18,000 feet of pressure altitude, uh, we were able to get that 100 low lead to boil, um, in some cases quite violently. And um, this is in a standing chamber with no agitation to the fuel, no movement in the fuel. When this is actually sitting inside of an aircraft moving through fuel lines and stuff, as you agitate it, you're actually promoting that vapor formation. So that being said, 100 low lead is not necessarily safe. Um, it just gets you to a higher altitude uh, before it does start to have issues. However, automotive fuel, absolutely, even you know, in some cases with winter blend, which we don't have winter blend, we have summer blend here, but if we had winter blend, we could have gotten that stuff to start bubbling below 10,000 feet without much issue. One other thing to, to note is in our testing here, the one thing we're not accounting for is the suction of the Rotax pumps. Without the boost pump system, the Rotax pumps actually drop the system down by as much as another three or four PSI if both pumps are running. So on top of the fact that we're at, you know, starting our boiling at 18 or 19,000 feet on a 100 low lead, and where it really starts to, to jump is around 21,000 feet of pressure as we were uh, testing, and you'll see that in some of the footage that we put up but now take another three to four PSI out of that, and we're talking a couple thousand foot difference. So that's where really it becomes an issue and where a lot of people aren't really focusing on is the fact that that negative pressure due to the pumps is really causing more harm. So the boost pump system itself is designed to bring back that pressure plus add a few PSI to really add a buffer there for you so that Avgas and MoGas could be safely used without any issues. So as we found, yes, using Avgas is going to make it better and it's more stable, but are you out of the woods completely? The answer is no, especially if you're coming from a hot environment with a quick climb up to a higher altitude. And if you just look at the RVP numbers, most um, Avgas is sitting right around seven PSI. So if we do the math, and we figure one half atmosphere is 15,000 feet, that's seven and a half PSI. Let's add a couple more two or three PSI because of the Rotax pumps. And that's putting us somewhere down around, you know, five PSI, four PSI. So as you can see, the math works to where you could have an issue even as early as 15,000 feet with the right conditions. So the conclusion really that we can come to is this. If you're gonna be flying really anything above 14,000 feet, um, frankly, you really need to have a fuel boost system of some kind. Because uh, the fact of the matter is, particularly in, in, on automotive fuel, if you're going to be flying at that altitude on automotive fuel, without a fuel boost system, you're really putting yourself at risk for trouble with your engine. Do you really want to take that chance? So that's why just saying, you know, as a blanket statement, oh, I'll just run higher low lead, I'll be fine. If you're on anything turbocharged, where you can absolutely get to those altitudes with ease, especially something like the TSI, um, you really need to consider that theory uh, and, and honestly these boost pumps are going to be really important for safety for flights in those kinds of operations. And one thing to, to add to that, proof as to what we're saying here is 
look at certified aircraft and all the high altitude certified aircraft have systems similar to this where they boost that fuel from the um, tank to the pumps to keep cavitation from happening. So this has been a problem, not just now with you know, the Sling TSI, it has been a problem for ages and that's why these systems exist. It's just now we're getting into these aircraft that are more available to the average person that can cruise at these kind of altitudes. So it's becoming just a little more widely known. So one last thing I'd like to say is if you'd like to look at the results of the tests that we've done on this fuel boost system on a flying Sling TSI, where we actually have a nice write-up that talks about, first of all, the pressures that we are experiencing, uh, absolute fuel pressures that we are experiencing at different altitudes, as well as uh, different theoretical situations that we've uh, pinned out on an RVP chart, uh, I'd really recommend that you go to aiboostpump.com. Uh, well, that's our landing page for our whole fuel boost system, and you can see the data that's in there uh, from our tests. Thanks for watching this video. We really appreciate it. If you have any questions about this system, please feel free to contact us, and we'd be happy to help you out.